just a few feet away from Kennedy's car. 31-year-old Marianne Mormon was standing on the side of Elm Street, waiting for her chance to take a picture. She was holding a Polaroid land camera, similar to this one. Her angle of view was right next to the spot where the motorcade would pass, between her camera and the grassy knoll. As the car was coming down and it's moving, you don't have much time because it is a Polaroid. I just stepped to the, uh, to the edge here and Gene is hollering, look, Mr. President, look our way. And then I snapped the picture, which was at the same instant, evidently, as the bullet hit him, not realizing that's what had happened, but I did hear a noise. Taken just 15 feet from the president, this picture documents the exact moment of his death. I could see people around me um, falling to the ground or running and doing, and that, you know, let me to know something is happening. This Polaroid gives us the clearest view of the grassy knoll at the time of the fatal shot. Marianne's vantage point gave her not only a clear view of the grassy knoll, but also the Texas School Book Depository. Had she taken a picture earlier, rather than waiting for Kennedy to get closer, she might have given us a view of the infamous six-floor sniper's perch and the image of a rifle being fired. But does this extraordinary image have any other stories to tell? Unsolved history needs to recreate that picture and recreate history. Only one photographer, Marion Mormon, captured the fatal shot in a still. Her angle of view takes in the stockade fence in the grassy knoll. Because of its clear view of this area, her Polaroid has been controversial since day one. You know, this is the cleanest copy of this I've ever seen. This is a copy of the version kept by the Dallas FBI office. The FBI copied her photograph shortly after the assassination, maybe a week or so later. And under the Freedom of Information, uh, back in the 1980s, I obtained this print. This two and a half inch print must be blown up considerably to look at the detail in the background. For conspiracists, proof that someone was hiding on the knoll would be the key to the mystery. Evidence that Lee Harvey Oswald did not act alone. But what would a second gunman actually look like through this camera? Are we looking in the right place for the right thing? So Marianne Mormon was right here, and what we're going to do is replicate her shot. Basically. Very Unsolved crazy. history brought expert photographer Mark Waggy and an assortment of cameras to Dealey Plaza. Today we have approximately the same light that they had in 1963. Right, which is a very good thing. This will be great for this, for our test. For this test. We then positioned our three extras on the stairs and a mock gunman behind the stockade fence, simulating where the hypothetical gunman could have hidden in 1963. We then took pictures with an exact duplicate of Mormon's camera. And to see what a more sophisticated device would have captured, we also took pictures with a 35 millimeter camera and film stock comparable to what would have been available at the time. After processing the negatives, Unsolved History checked out the results in Mark's studio. First, we looked at our new Polaroid image. Polaroid negative, here's the Polaroid print, two size. That could be enlarged, of course, but that's the original off the camera. Unlike the original, there is no debate. We planted a gunman in the shadows. His silhouette is clear, but we can see no details. But in the original Mormon Polaroid, no definitive silhouette can be spotted. Clearly, the scene around the grassy knoll has changed somewhat with the times, but not that much. Why wouldn't Mormon's picture have captured the gunman? Unfortunately for history, that camera and film could not take a razor-sharp photo. 
it's a print, it had no negative, and yet it's a 3000 ASA film, so it had clumps of silver in it the size of New Hampshire, probably. Right. <laughs> Uh, and she had stopped down her lens all the way, so she had focus front to rear, probably right. with depth of field. But when you stop down a lens, it's, it's notorious for uh, destroying the resolving power of the lens, so it's not that sharp. Yeah. I don't think we can dismiss any theories just based on that print because it's just simply not clear enough to, to know what's going on along the stockade fence. There's just not enough information and never will be. But. What if Marianne had used a 35 millimeter camera? Would she have captured a mysterious gunman and rewritten history? If we take a look at, at the 35 millimeter right. film, I don't think we would identify ever the person that we have sitting back there, but you take a look. Mm -hmm. There would be no question that that is definitely a human and, and you'd get some idea of a stocking cap on. So yeah, you can certainly it would be see obvious. Him. she'd had a 35 millimeter camera with a good film of the day, then we'd probably have some of these questions answered or they just never would have come up. One has to ask, would a sophisticated hit team have risked being caught on film by all of these photographers? <laughs> 